Welcome back. You're watching The Globe. Now, as Africa has been celebrating Africa Month and yesterday, uh, Africa Day, the continent also uh, takes stock of how colonialism has impacted our heritage, cultures and language. Colonization has had a tremendous impact on indigenous, indigenous languages uh, and in many cases it's uh, resulted in a decrease in the numbers of native language speakers and some instances language extinction. Well, to talk more about this, we're now joined by Professor Alden Mutembe, who's uh, with the Julius Nyerere, who's the Julius Nyerere Chair of Kiswahili Studies at the University of Dar es Salaam. Uh, Professor Alden Mutembe, thank you very much indeed for joining us and uh, welcome to the program. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, it is a pleasure. All right, I'm fascinated. Uh, most people won't know that the most spoken language on the continent actually is uh, Kiswahili. Yes, it is actually um, a language that is uh, spoken by uh, around 250 million people in Africa and beyond in the uh, American diaspora. Um, it is now uh, a language uh, that is um, an official language in East Africa that is uh, uh, seven countries, uh, include, uh, which include um, Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, South Sudan, and now uh, DRC. It is also a language that has been accepted in the SADC countries as a working language, and those are uh, 16 countries. And now, finally, uh, it is a language that has been officially accepted in the African Union as a, so, as a working language, joining the other uh, three or four languages, yeah. All right, uh, yesterday, uh, Africa Day, you delivered uh, your Africa Day uh, lecture at uh, UCT. Share with us some of your thoughts about uh, Kiswahili uh, that you shared uh, uh, with the audience. Yeah, uh, yes, actually it was a good day. Uh, my talk was about uh, Swahili as a um, uh, what was the role of Swahili in the liberation and what could be the role of Swahili in the uh, integration of, uh, of Africa. So I gave a history of the language uh, and the quality of the language that um, that's why, you know, so, uh, the reason as to why Swahili has uh, been accepted all over uh, yeah, because of the quality of the, of the language and the fact that uh, the language is not uh, an ethnic, uh, 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 certain ethnic uh, language, but rather it's a combination of dialects, uh, several dialects, and it's open up, opening up a room uh, for other languages to, uh, to be in Swahili uh, in terms of vocabulary, values, and, um, uh, and phrases and so on and so forth. So... Uh, so I gave the history uh, of the liberation mm. that Swahili has done, starting from Tanzania, joining, uh, um, uh, putting together, uniting together uh, more than uh, 150 languages of Tanzania. Uh, and, and, and I also said, you cannot have Tanzania without Swahili. Uh, you know, um, Tanganyika and, Zanz and Tanganyika and Zanzibar, when uh, they joined together in 1964, it was also uh, partly because of Swahili. And uh, that, you know, uh, people who were, who were uh, fighting for liberation in their countries, uh, the, you know, independence, uh, struggle for independence in most uh, Southern African countries, when they came to Tanzania, um, what they learned, uh, besides you know uh, the fighting techniques and so on, was also Swahili language. And when they came back home, they they, they brought together uh, along with them uh, Swahili language. So uh, Swahili became the language of, of liberation, and I, I categorized the uh, the term liberation to mental liberation, social, political, and later economic uh, liberation. And so. Um, I've also shared with them uh, the way now that, you know, uh, Swahili is uniting 
are not only Tanzanians, but East Africans. Today, we don't speak of uh, Swahili as being uh, a language of a specific country, but it's the language that is moving across mm. Africa. Uh, the fact that now Swahili has been accepted uh, as an official uh, working lang language in the African Union uh, stands for itself, saying uh, for as a testimony that Swahili is going to be uh, surely a lingua franca and uh, uniting all of, of uh, Africans. All right. I know that here in South Africa, if it wasn't for COVID-19, uh, there were already plans to pilot to teaching Kiswahili in some of our schools here. So it is something that's gaining traction. Um, let's explore a little bit about um, the damage caused by colonization. You know, when I think about French, if it wasn't for Africa, we don't know how important this language might still be in the world. It probably would have been less significant. And I just wonder what impact that has had on us, that we've had to contend with French and English, uh, languages which are not our own, but have become our modus operandi for everything almost. Yes, uh, you're right. Uh, unfortunately, Africa is the only continent uh, that uh, still has these labels like Lusophone Africa, Francophone Africa, uh, Anglophone Africa. And to the extent some people think actually that these are part and parcel of African, you know, uh, culture and so on. Uh, well, I, 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 I come from what the so-called uh, Anglophone Africa, but when I move out of that phony, uh, that Anglophone, and go to uh, Mozambique, for instance, uh, you, 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 they, they cannot understand you uh, if you, 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 you say, well, I, I speak English. It, the same uh, goes to the French speaking. And it's a pity that in Africa, we, we don't hear much of... Uh, uh, things like Nguni phone, for instance, or Arabu phone, or Hausa phone, or Swahili phone, for that matter. Uh, to the extent that, that, I mean, Africa have been uh, reduced to only uh, consumers and not producers. Uh, so that's one of the damage because it is deep in, in, in the mind uh, and that's why I, I guess also I gave also the example uh, using Ngugi um, uh work decolonizing uh, the mind, because it is deep in our mind uh, when we think that you know African languages cannot do this and that, whereas we know from history and from archaeology that Africa, uh, you know, African languages uh, are so superior, and uh, we had you know science and technology back then, if you read uh, Shanta Diop and, and, and the likes. But um, uh, the contemporary Africa think that, you know, if you don't speak French, then you're not civilized. If you don't speak uh, Portuguese, for those who are recognized by, by, by uh, Port, uh, Portuguese, uh, then uh, you, you are not civilized. The same if you cannot speak English or your, your English is not intelligible with you know that this and that you, you're not intelligent in, uh, uh, enough so uh, people uh, don't go for skills and uh, the knowledge they go for the you know the the language as if um, in 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 African languages uh, you can you can't have knowledge within uh, African languages as if uh, the knowledge goes with, or is packaged and goes with Western languages. That's very unfortunate. And uh, most people still think that, you know, you cannot uh, do without Western languages. But at least in East Africa, now uh, go, uh, is going to uh, also in, in the Saudi countries, we know that um, there's a richness in African country, uh, in, Af in African in indigenous languages. Uh, there's a lot of knowledge in African languages. And um, if we, we are allowed to, uh, to teach ourselves, you know, uh, our languages 
And uh, we, there's a potential of cross-pollinating, you know, understanding each other and so on and so forth. So uh, it's very unfortunate that yeah. s- most people, actually, I would say, still think that we cannot excel uh, without uh, Western languages. So how do we claim our identity back? How do we mobilize our languages to work for us uh, in the same way that uh, our colonial uh, invaders were able to capture us with their languages. How do we reverse that process? Do we use languages like Kiswahili? Actually, we have started already. We have started that. Uh, using the example of, uh, of Tanzania, we have started already uh, showing uh, with experience and uh, practical examples that, you know, uh, our languages can do that. Uh, at the University of Dar es Salaam, uh, there's a project now going on with the University of KwaZulu Natal uh, of teaching Swahili using other indigenous languages. Uh, even today, I was in a Zoom meeting uh, with Sharjah in United Arab Emirates, uh, proposing um, a, a paradigm shift where we would like to, to uh, to teach uh, Arabic, to teach Swahili using Arabic in, in the Arab world. So we have started actually, and uh, it is working. Mm. I don't see the reason as to why uh, I should not teach uh, Zulu people, uh, for instance. I should not teach Zulu Swahili using Isi Zulu. Or if I go to uh, Zimbabwe, I don't see why I should not teach uh, Swahili using Shona or Sindebele. Mm. Or here at UCT, uh, in this area of South Africa, why I should not uh, teach Swahili using is is yeah. and so on and so forth. So uh, we have started actually, um, and uh, we'd like to encourage other uh, indigenous African languages to 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 take the 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 route, uh, and it is possible. It is very very possible. Uh, in so doing, uh, we are also reviving and showing the world that Africa has something to contribute uh, to the rest of the world. So we have started with Swahili, and it is working. So what do you say to people who say, uh, Prof, I hear you, but we live in a global world now. If I want to travel, I need to speak a global language. And then in an instance, we're stuck with French, English, Spanish maybe, and uh, maybe even Portuguese. How do we get away from that thinking that we can compete in a global scenario uh, without the use of these, uh, inverted commas, global languages? Well, actually, it's not the question of competition. Uh, Rather, it is the question of finding the, the space uh, in, in, in our societies, finding a linguistic space in our societies. It is not a bad thing to learn uh, other languages. Actually, it is good. It's good to learn Chinese. It's good to learn uh, French. It is good to, to have English or German or um, Portuguese. Th- that's fine. But while, what we are saying, we cannot... Uh, continue to allow these languages to, ident- uh, to identify us, to be uh, the language of our identity, to be the language that will define our, our destiny, to be the language that will actually, uh, on one hand, they are killing our, our culture, and they are bringing in their culture, uh, and still we use those languages. We can learn them, we can uh, learn them, and actually we encourage people to learn to learn these languages, uh, Africans are multilingual, so we have that ability of, of, uh, of having several languages. But what we are saying, we should be allowed or actually encouraging each other to learn and value our own languages so that uh, we can also offer, Africa uh, can have something to offer to the world. Why don't they, uh, uh, why don't they, uh, come and, and study um, Swahili. For your information, Swahili uh, in back in 1963, 
Swahili was uh, chosen as the language of uh, identity for African Americans. Uh, for African Americans to be able to say, well, here I am, an African, at least uh, a person must know uh, Swahili. That's so, that is one of the, the area where Swahili has excelled in the African American uh, through the festivals like Kwanzaa. So I don't see the reason as to why Americans should not learn Swahili to be able to come in East Africa, in the southern part of Africa, to trade and to do all, all those things. I don't see why uh, the Europeans, if they want to come uh, to trade and do uh, you know, several business and uh, diplomatic uh, um, engagement and so on, using, uh, using uh, Swahili or uh, any other African language for that matter. We have allowed uh, we have allowed us to be submissive to go and say I cannot go to Europe uh, without without um, French as if everybody in Europe speaks uh, uh, French uh, I cannot go to America uh, without speaking Portuguese I mean for those who are coming from uh, the 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 loose foreign countries. Um, so those kind of mentality have to change. What I'm saying is, uh, we can have, Africa can have, have something to offer, and let them also learn, and uh, you know, learn our, our culture, um, appreciate our culture, value our culture, and you know, uh, we, as we are also valuing their culture and, and their languages. So it is good to learn their languages. Yes, but I don't, I don't see why we should take uh, English or French or Portuguese as my, you know, something yeah. that will de determine my future. If I don't speak that language, then I'm, I'm nobody. I have my identity. I have my own prestige. I'm an African. I'm a proud of being African. I want also to speak an African language. Prof, I wish we could talk for longer. I'm fascinated deeply uh, by uh, this conversation. Perhaps we need to do it again soon. Uh, but for tonight, thank you very, very much indeed for joining us. Asante sana, kwaheri, kuana, jioni Thank you very much. Asante sana, asante sana, kabisa. Thank you very much for having me. Have a lovely evening. Thank you, sir. All right, so there you go. Um, Kiswahili, the most spoken language on the continent. Perhaps we should all start using it. And then